Today, I bring you a slightly different and special episode of the Mood Podcast. I had the privilege of having abstract artist and painter John Raymond in my studio for the last few days, creating a painting just for me. And so I thought it would do his talents justice if we filmed it and would be a good opportunity also to showcase his expressionist process as we watch and learn through his art. I noticed John's work last year when I saw some of his art in a hotel here in Bali. And after reaching out to him, I managed to convince him to come and visit the studio here and do a custom piece just for me. John is a fascinating character and an introvert at heart, an asset I think makes him and his artwork what it is today. Since 2017, he's been exploring abstract expressionism. His painting technique combines brushstroke with acrylic paint textures that are arranged by palette knife or sometimes directly by hand without any tools. With a combination of these lines and colors, his intent is to bring the nuance of self-reflection combined with a sense of stillness. Through this episode, you'll hear us talk about how he came up with this specific concept for my painting, as well as his generic outlook on his art and his techniques when it comes to his personal and commercial work. For those listening, I do encourage to try and grab some clips of this on my YouTube channel if you're able as it couples so well with the wonderful visuals that John's talents bring to our eyes. So please enjoy a little glimpse into the world of John Raymond. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's really great to have you. So um, those people watching and listening to this um, will know that you've you've been with us now for two days in the studio. Um, painting a custom painting for me which has been an absolute privilege certainly to to watch and experience and uh i can see the final painting now um which we'll put on the on the screen for people watching at the end today's a bit of a um featured artist episode uh this is john raymond he's um one of my favorite artists here in indonesia i spotted his artwork um last year when we stayed in a hotel here in Bali and his art was kind of littered all over the walls and there was one piece that really um, hit home with me it was absolutely beautiful as an abstract painter his process is kind of abstract as well so what I wanted to do was kind of document over the next two days essentially it takes him to do one of these paintings kind of document him his style his process yeah I hope you enjoy um what kind of talk through it as we go because I'm just interested in how John comes up with these incredible artworks and um but for now we'll let him do his thing and we'll just observe before we kind of talk about your process tell us a bit about you and how you started painting how you started the style that you you have this abstract expressionist style um just give us a bit of introduction and history about you I'm gradu graduated from visual communication design. So a lot of my work now is influenced by that creative process when I studied in my college. But uh, for now, along the way, I find my own uh, technique. And when I am work at Graphic House Studio, maybe earlier uh, 2014, I think, in Bandung. It's very the first time I enjoy uh, the design thing. But at the end, I didn't get any satisfaction from that. So I have to change my creative process. And I think when I see a several exhibition why i didn't try to make a painting based on my idea not based on my client brief or idea so that's it maybe a quick history about <laughs> my life <laughs> so you've been doing it for nine years a lot of story about that but uh, i i've been the past six years become a full-time artist at the fine art. So John's already started. We're going to talk to him a little bit about 
what he's doing. I mean, to me, it looks like he's mixing paint, but I don't know anything. Um, so yeah, uh, he's he's kindly come over to the studio here, and we've kind of made some space to turn it from a photography studio into well a painting studio. So um, we've got a little space here. Um, John, tell us a little bit about your first process and what you're doing at the moment. Color I, I used to uh, mix with a little bit black, uh, brown and yellow for uh, the broken white color. Wait, this is just something you came up with now? This is the original painting for Green Sing at the Laguna. Oh, okay, okay. That's all the concept. Uh, I will paint like that. Okay, and that, then you just put it all uniformly over the the canvas yes and that is the part that takes the four hours this this process maybe uh for the breakout background i need half hour oh okay and then the green sing part is the longest part the what uh, green green sing what's the green green sing is traditional uh, pattern of body oh okay uh, the meaning of green sing is uh, healthy for healthy, mm. and uh, the that usually uh, used for special ceremony in Bali. Are you familiar with the phrase in English "struggling artist" or "starving artist"? Have you heard of that before? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Were you a starving artist when you first started, or did you have success? quite quickly i have much of struggling yeah at the first time because uh, i'm not uh, graduated from fine art school from visual communication design is much different from uh, art school and there's a stereotype that if you not graduated from fine art school you are not qualified to help an uh, exhibition. So uh, it's quite struggling for the first time. Mm. Is that specific to Indonesia that they have that requirement? Or are you talking in the global art market where you it's very difficult to exhibit your work without having a recognized qualification? In my city, Bandung, yeah. ex especially. Yeah. I don't, I don't, and Jakarta. I don't know about globally. The, 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 do you think the, that's changing now? Or do you think it is still the same where they have to be very strict on what qualifications you have? Uh, it it changes much Yeah. Now for now. Yeah. What is it about the painting or the, 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 the art of painting um, that you love so much? First, uh, the process, the creative process, when I do uh, research, I read a lot of uh, topic and I learn about new technique, about painting. I think I enjoy every part of that creative process. So I love and I want more. I want more to exploring new technique and new perspective to pouring out into the canvas. So the way I understand your work is that you have commissioned work. I like custom work, right? For for individuals or for co uh, commercial clients. And you have your own personal work that you sell, yeah. right? Yes. Is the process different for each one? Absolutely different uh, approach. Uh, when client come up to me and they give me a brief or story or some kind of that, I will interpret it into a different color, the psychology of color, the meaning of brush strokes when going up and going down. And and I can I can play it with 
composition. But when I uh, talk about exhibition or uh, I just want to express myself into canvas, I didn't I didn't do research. I just express and be surprised uh, what the result. So how do you, if you were to explain who you are rather than paint it, how would you explain and express yourself in words in, in the best English you can? If not a painter, if, what do you if mean? You're putting your personality on the campus, oh, okay. right? But I want you to tell me your personality to, to me. Oh. Uh, my personality, there is a common composition when I'm I do a sketches from my study and when I'm younger uh, different style but the common composition is I uh, keep the emptiness part of the artwork yes usually the abstract painting is full of can full canvas and with texture with the uh, shaping but it's full but for me it beautiful is when you keep the emptiness because later i i realized that that's my personality that i really enjoy myself in me time alone so uh, that's it i think uh that the common thing about my artwork interesting and uh, that yeah that resonates with me as well the the way you you paint i think that's why i've enjoyed your work so much so for those listening and watching the the history with us is that i went to a hotel in bali about a year ago stayed in um stayed in the hotel for just one night and when myself and my wife walked into our, the room that we were given, your artwork was on the wall, and immediately I took to it straight away. Like, this mm. is fantastic. Who is it? Luckily, your name was on it, and then started to research, and then I reached out to you. Maybe that's, you know, we, we have something in common there, and that's why people, I mean, that's art. Essentially, you're connecting, you, the, the viewer and the, the subject is connecting with the artist, right? Yes. How, how did that style, how did your style evolve you know how did you come up with the style did you was it from a lot of inspiration a lot of books a lot of other artists or was it just excuse the pun was it just a blank canvas where you just okay let's see what comes out uh, of course i do research and learn about from other artists but but uh, when i met the canvas i just Pouring the paint, shaping the with brush strokes, and maybe a uh, little scratch, splash. I think uh, when I exploring that, that I found that marbling and brush stroke is can describe and re representing my idea into visual so uh, maybe I I cannot say that I must divine uh, my art style like this or like that just do it just uh, enjoy the process and I like when I make mistakes a lot of mistakes maybe uh, just I don't I didn't mean that part is full of pain but it pouring out there i enjoy it so with abstract painting can other people notice mistakes i mean that's i don't really know how to ask that question what i mean is because there isn't almost a defined plan or defined shape or defined you know technical quality that someone like me could notice in your painting mm. does that mean you just have more freedom to, to you worry less about me i mean take photography it's it's clear to see mistakes, the the bigger ones, right? Because you have an image and you can see if something is, you know, the color grading is wrong or, mm. you know, there's a distraction or the composition's wrong, or, you know, some basic photography rules or concepts. Mm. 
unless that was the intent of the artist, of course. But I sense with these types of things, how would you define a mistake? Is it just you intended to do something and then you did something different? Mistakes means I didn't. It, I didn't satisfaction with my work. Right. When I uh, brass and didn't expect that and uh, or too loud to chaos I, did, I didn't like it so maybe not often but in sometimes I make this one the new one yeah well we talked about this earlier didn't we with some of the clients you have for the commission work because you know I'm sat here watching you do a painting from scratch and I'm thinking what if I don't like it I mean that do you ever worry about that if your client is not going to like your work or if or if they you get actually get a complaint at the end of it mm. overall my clients is satisfaction with my work so maybe it it mm, it made me more confident when i painting but sometimes but it can be one percent from my work is client not sat satisfaction so yeah but it can be a refund anyway <laughs> <laughs> i feel like this kind of artwork it would be suitable to like an la crowd you know like by the beach quite abstract um, certainly a lot of kind of uh, emotive patterns um, when you look at John's work on his website and his portfolio, a lot of like ocean movement comes yeah. to mind. Is that was that your original inspiration when you started painting? Where did your inspiration come from? A lot of my idea comes from human human value, uh, beliefs sadness emotion religion religion so when you're thinking about painting a new painting where do you start in terms of the concept in your brain do you think okay i need to do a painting about or i need to feel a painting about sadness or i need to I want to do a painting about joy or something that's has a complex set of emotions or you know how do you how do you begin a new painting in your mind my study background is design actually so when i become a graphic designer i do research and my mapping to deep dive into creative process but in the fine art is opposite uh, a lot of my artwork is to uh, become expressionist and I, I free to express my art without any boundaries mm -hmm. without any uh, patterns of I must I must enjoy my creative process uh, I think it's uh, interesting about painting is such a little little boundaries so I can free in my mind when I sad, when I happy. I just pour out the pain and the brush strokes. Maybe one day uh, I paint the with angry. Mm -hmm. I just splatter, it, splatter, and express yeah. more black and red mm -hmm. and when it finished i surprised with the result 
uh, you like the result, or you, yeah. Yes, I like. <laughs> so really, there is no. There's no concept that you really plan. It's just literally whatever comes out. Yeah. When you start. For the commission work, uh, the client have a big idea and big background story of the artwork, but uh, usually the client is uh, trust my style. Yeah. So, uh, I just free to explore it. And that's really what we're doing here is, is he has an idea of what I like, but I've given him no instruction. Um, you know, the, the beauty of art really is, uh, is the hopefully lack of boundaries, right? So, you know, we talk, talk with photographers on, on the podcast all the time and they, the, the constant battle between creative freedom and creative limitations is seems to be always there it's a perennial problem i think a lot of artists have so it's it's you know beautiful to watch this process where you know just letting him do what he wants and i i hope that even with commission work he he as well as many art other artists are able to do that and if if you like an artist then you know surely you should trust them to to be to express themselves in their favorite way and um you know it's really cool to see this we've given him a little like he has a better framework to to work because we showed him some of his, his previous work that i like and that we like so um that's kind of helping him guide but at the moment every kind of brush stroke is is unique and and new to him as it is to us so it's cool later i will give the abstraction mm -hmm. here cool and then uh, when it finished we will realize that it is uh, like your what you doing we uh, wide spectrum of your works there we go we have a metaphor for what we're doing at your aid, what we're doing with the podcast, hopefully what uh, yeah. we're doing photography. This is this is the metaphor. This is the blank canvas. And um, you know, myself and Finn with your aid, this is probably a good good time to kind of plug that, I guess, in the video. Uh, downstairs beneath this studio, we've got um, specialty coffee cafe, which is my other love. We've got a jewelry kind of showroom piece and. Um, you know, essentially an art cafe. So, you know, we're super proud of that. It's pretty new, um, but I'm glad that, you know, people are recognizing it and that people, people are seeing everything that we've kind of put into that in a creative way. Um, most of it is down to my business partner, Finn, but this studio is kind of like a sacrosanct place these days. And, you know, to have other artists in here, not just chatting behind the mics, but, but doing their thing you know, we've, we've had a lot of photographers in here before. We've never had a painter. So um, for me, this is super cool. And, uh, you know, I'm really enjoying watching him do his thing, but more importantly, like getting an understanding of the concept. And, you know, from originally saying it was, wasn't really much of a concept, but I kind of know what he means now is like, he waits to, he was explaining to me this over message. I didn't quite understand it, but a bit like, um, photography in a way in a studio you you don't know what you're going to do until you meet that person and you see what they're like you see their character and that will kind of lead you down the path as to what you're going to photograph or in this case what you're going to paint and that's essentially what john is saying is you know he's he's kind of um you know taking his uh perception of what this place is like what i'm like what the people around me are like and um you know putting that into a an abstract image so the process at the moment is is essentially the fundamentals of the the painting the background is kind of getting laid now um we'll probably be going for another hour or two and then yeah tomorrow is kind of where all the pieces start falling falling together and starts doing the abstract 
shapes and colors. So yeah, really cool, exciting. How many, um, how much do you work? I mean, are you always painting or do you need like emotional space between jobs? Do you do a painting and then have, you know, three, four days off or does it not matter to, for, for your process? Depends on projects mm. and I must be professional when the commission projects comes. But when I prepare for exhibition uh, I used to give my uh, me time because my artwork speaks about that too mm. so I don't need to be rushed that one or today must uh, have many painting mm. like that so Tell us a little bit about this painting that you've done today and yesterday. What what was your thought process? I know you you talked about um, what you were thinking when you met me and when you came into this building. Tell us a little bit more detail about you know how you you created this painting. Before you uh, told me that you like my style like this, but when I came to this place, when I Enter the uh, the door downstairs. I saw that you have a jewelry coffee shop and interesting interiors. Photo photograph also, and then uh, my first opinion is uh, this man is full of great creativity. And when I met you, uh, I learned about your personality that. You have a uh, brave to take a uh, step the creative is your life so I interpret it with uh, a circle means a personal that world with idea and there is a imaginary portal mm. that circle is come up with a uh, freely idea there up and then uh, the abstract marbling is more free more uh, boldness at the same time that's like liquid and flexibility I think I s see that thing on you mm. Interesting. It really is fascinating and uh, I absolutely love it. So thank you so much for doing it for me and, and coming over to Bali. What What is the next chapter for you? Where What does the future look like? What plans do you have for 2024? Actually, I'm not a man of vision. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just do what I do. I just love what I do. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the past two years, me and wife, my wife has an idea to make an event, art event. It's called JRA Life Moment. Uh, that's combined music and art that I love. Uh, from since a kid, uh, I play and I learn guitar. Uh, so when make this event I combine with start to play guitar and looping it while I'm painting do live, live painting okay so uh, this year will be a third event in Jakarta maybe around October or November I think that's that's the first idea came up from my wife Anita when we had a problem situation that after pandemic we have no exhibition and we have no proposal to exhibition from galleries she she came with me she came to me with an idea 
why we uh, cannot make our event our uh, exhibition but uh, eventually right now it's just uh, our performance uh, that idea we documented well uh, we video and f- photograph and then we send to several gal- galleries and then from that uh, I get uh, over for exhibition in 2023 I think mm-hmm. last year I got uh, my first solo exhibition Hey guys, welcome back to day two. Um, so John here yesterday basically did the background, laid the foundations and did this um, this pattern here, which is indicative of Gerensing, which is traditional Balinese textile, Bali Aga textile, um, indigenous to Tenganan, an area here in Bali, um, one of the oldest areas for weaving textiles and um, He's kind of incorporated that pattern into this design. So, nearly finished with the with the foundation yes. background. Yes, we finished, and I will. This is the last part of this painting. It will be fast, and but it, it is the most interesting that I. I even don't know the result actually, but it will be interesting with the texture of the marble okay. technique. So how is that different to what you've been doing with the background? Uh, this is the lightness of uh, thin of paint. Mm-hmm. Didn't have uh, any texture, but it will more thick and lot of liquid text texture. Okay, different paint. Different, uh, same paint. Same paint, but it is more what okay, the more thick. More thick. How do people become like you in in the artist space? I I um I mean I obviously don't know your business inside out, but um there is an ele- relative success there right i don't know how, how successful you are or how not successful you are but from what i can see you your paintings are, are sold quite well how do how do artists who want to do any painter or any artist can you give us any advice as to how to become more successful how to sell artwork how to do exhibitions, how to become, how to kind of get your art into hotels or to other businesses. I just can give an advice. Uh, do it wholeheartedly and be consistent with your art. When you're consistent and publishing it on your social media or your website, uh we never know when the opportunities come when the people will see your artworks will see your uh, maybe photograph maybe your interior design you name it uh, but when you consistent when you stick to your style with your identity i think that's the uh, main uh, foundation of my you can tell it about success but for me uh, beside the painting sold or recognizes with a lot of people you satisfied with satisfied with yourself and I think the success for me is when my message from artwork is well delivered to art lovers or collectors. Uh, I think this the 
ultimate success for me. When other artists or your peers say that your art is good, is that what you mean? Uh, when when other artists buy your work, mm, other artists buy my work. Mm. Uh, is that what you mean? No, no. My, I mean, when uh, I satisfied with my work, that's the first and second one. When my message of or my meaning from the artwork. My artwork is well delivered to uh, audience, to collector, and they appreciate my uh, values. That is the ultimate success. Well, I think that's a um, a really nice, and that was going to be my next question. Actually, how you define success, mm. and because we all have our own subjective definitions and perceptions of what we we feel is success. Yeah. But I think with artists, it's it's different um, because we want to have that connection with the person that's viewing it or buying mm. it or experiencing it, right? And that connection comes from our ability to express who we are and what we're trying to say. Mm. And if we can't do that very well, it's very frustrating, right? Yeah. So we're finished. It was much quicker than I thought it was going to be once he had um, the background or, or done ready to go um, and all this time I was looking at it from the wrong angle so now it's complete um, it really is mesmerizing and uh, yeah, I'm super super happy with it it's it's beautiful I think John was explaining to me that he was trying to certainly with the colors which are the for me the things that stand out initially um, the golds, the oranges, the browns, the blacks, whites, greys. Apparently that's some kind of reflection of me. Yes. I first came, uh, yesterday I came to this place and talked with you. I think this color dominate and have energy describe your personality. So I use this color to uh, to represent your identity and personality as well. For me, then past the colors, we've got this this almost center of gravity underneath with the, the circle. And then everything, all of this, I don't know, freedom, creativity flowing out of it. Um, almost like wanting to escape, which I guess resonates with me quite a lot. Um, it's wonderful, I absolutely love it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, he's got messy hands. <laughs>